good job, it's your boy Ross. Back at it again with another video. And you see, the robe is back on. So you already know what that means, man. I'm feeling luxurious. I'm feeling good. And I know some of you guys wanted me to bring back the robe. So, Robe Ross has returned. You're welcome. And I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. We're going to check out Royal Rumble winners nobody asked for. Now, there have been a few times where we're sitting here watching the Royal Rumble and there's a few people in the Royal Rumble match that we're thinking maybe should win or could win. And ultimately, it's somebody that we didn't expect nor did we want to win. You know, Vince McMahon having his way with creative and, and pretty much picking the people he wants to see headline WrestleMania. We've seen that all too many times. So we're going to check this out. Wrestling's uh, premiere. I, I think this may be the first time I've ever checked out uh, any videos from this individual. So uh, I'm going to check this out, see what he's talking about. And uh, we're going to go from there. Appreciate all love and support. Royal Rumble had its Damn, I, I didn't mean to press play automatically. But appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown. And let's see what wrestling's premiere uh, has to bring to the table on this very interesting topic. Their share of bizarre winners over the years. Some were welcoming, others not so much. The 1999 Royal Rumble was headlined with a $100,000 bounty. Throughout the build, Stone Cold Steve Austin was constantly being targeted. He was forced mm -hmm. to enter at number one, and this was done in an effort to prevent Austin from headlining WrestleMania and in turn becoming the head of the company as champion. He had to go through hell just to get the spot, and I think everybody expected Austin to win it. It just made sense because the corporation were a thorn in his side, but in a surprise turn of events, it was Mr. McMahon. Yeah. He booked himself to win the Royal Rumble. Why? To add more drama on Austin's pursuit of championship gold, it was kind of smart because St. Valentine's Day Massacre did a good pay-per-view buy. 450,000 buys, and it's all from the heat that the Austin and McMahon feud generated, mm. especially from the Royal Rumble itself. That does make sense. Did as the winner, though? Hell no. No. <laughs> but it brought a lot of entertainment and gave Austin another dramatic obstacle to overcome ahead of WrestleMania. So it's very, very different to the rest of the list. Throughout the 2000s, WWE got the Royal Rumble winners right. I wouldn't even say for the most part because when I see who won, it all made sense. Obviously, in hindsight, the Chris Benoit one sticks out. And I'm sure Eddie Guerrero would have been cool in that spot. But the 2000s mm -hmm. were nice. Edge wins in 2010, and then 2011 comes around. And at this point, there was a few favorites. The result wasn't entirely surprising, I'd say. But the favorites were John Cena and, of course, Alberto Del Rio. Mm -hmm. Del Rio's win came only four months after his debut and showed that there was a bright future. It was from out of nowhere, though. Not the build... But the fact that around SummerSlam time, this guy hadn't debuted, and he was going to be the one to face Edge at WrestleMania for the World Heavyweight Championship. The problem comes down to how hard he was pushed, and that all started here. Another problem, though, was who else could win this Rumble? The only candidates were John Cena and maybe CM Punk and Randy Orton. So, mm -hmm. that wasn't much. By the looks of it, the new era was the way to go, I guess. Throughout the year, the new wave of talent was becoming more and more notable. Others were given another chance at superstardom. One of those to receive this chance was Sheamus. As a babyface, Sheamus was revitalized and became one of the strongest booked wrestlers on the entire roster. His character was... I remember when Sheamus first came into the mix, into WWE. Yeah, they were booking him strong. <laughs> they were booking him strong. I remember that. I was like... They, they really into the Sheamus guy. <laughs> Fresh from what he used to be and had some hype behind him. At the time, he didn't seem as a likely winner. He did look like a potential secondary winner, though. But the first was Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. Jericho's return had some oddness about it, but he was the favorite. And just for this, they decided to change it like that. It didn't stop them in the past, and for somebody like Chris Jericho, to add the Royal Rumble to his legacy would have been cool. Sheamus that would have been nice. Carolina's second fiddle, but not to mention their match as well. It's a very forgettable Rumble and a very forgettable winner as well. The next one, though, was the opposite, John Cena. After a widely inconsistent 2012, which was highly over-exaggerated as the worst year of John Cena's career, he looked to rebound in 2013. To explain this properly, his year is like the Chiefs, the Warriors, or even a team like Man City not doing well. But it certainly wasn't his worst. It was his worst since probably 2008, though. The moment 2013 began, everyone and their mom knew who was winning the Raw Rumble, and it wasn't Dolph Ziggler or Ryback. It was John mm. Cena. This one might seem as false advertising, if you read the title, because there was some definitely that wanted him to win. But it was not that interesting and predictable. Predictable wasn't always bad, but when it's John Cena in the height of his push winning the Royal Rumble in the year of 2013, that's a different story. I think they could have had him face The Rock with another scenario and have somebody challenge for the world title here. The redemption mm -hmm. storyline was going to happen anyways. In a better world though, triple threat drama with The Rock winning the Royal Rumble, or even The Undertaker winning the Rumble itself, it sounds so far-fetched and ridiculous, but I would have preferred it 
over John Cena winning it. Just something yeah. other than him here. It, it wasn't even bad, though. Like, it just happened. You only like, 10s had some odd and downright bad decisions towards the Rumble, <laughs> and this pales in comparison to a couple of others. Towards WrestleMania 30 season, the only topic in the fans' mind was that of Daniel Bryan. Yeah, nah, it, it, was, it was Daniel or bust. That was it. Anything else was like, all right, well, no. <laughs> it was Daniel Bryan or bust. There were some people that could have got by with it at the time. Uh, I think um, Roman Reigns is crazy saying that. Roman Reigns at the time uh, could have been a, a better likely choice and the people would have bought into it. But nah, people wanted Daniel Bryan to win it. This was prime yes movement right here. Bryan's influence had taken the world by storm and the heights he reached have never been toppled since. So in the fans' eyes, there was only one man to win it all. The build for the Rumble made sense. Brian mm -hmm. got his ass beat repeatedly by the Wyatt family and the authority. Surely he'd turn it around now, right? Nobody else seemed like the favorite. That is until Batista returned. Oh. Cool to see him back. It's been a while the fans shared that sentiment for all of two minutes because when he won the Rumble, <laughs> they turned on him. They yep. turned on Randy Street as well because after his number 30 when they all expected to see Daniel Bryan. But Batista winning was horrific because oh of the outrage he caused. Maybe, yeah. just maybe, if he came out number 30 as a surprise, there would have been less outrage, but the floodgates were open and the yeah. fans weren't letting off. Nope. Ask 10 people, did you like Batista winning? One will answer yet. Yeah. It also ruined his return because from there, he was always going to be a heel in the fans' eyes. Yeah, and, and that sucks because Batista's return was pretty much overshadowed with the fact that no one wanted to see him win. They only wanted to see Daniel Bryan. That was it. He became Bootista from then on. <laughs> and that thought's unfortunate because he's Batista. I grew up watching him tear down the opposition and yeah. deal with loads of charisma. So seeing him become hated and yeah, some people actually hated him personally for taking that spot. It was kind of sad. Him being brought in like this was going to cause problems, and that's exactly what happened. Even he believed that this wasn't the right way to go. Not many were asking for a Batista Roma win in the year 2014. Hell, they even want Roman Reigns in the yeah. Shield to win it. And I guess McMahon was like, <laughs> okay. Heading into late yep. 2014, the Shield as a trio was no more. Each man drifted into a direction, and they seemed primed for super successful careers. Roman Reigns, though, was to WWE the clear standard. Mm -hmm. His size and look was helping him a lot, and he didn't have much experience, especially at the main event level, but they were going to make it work. Upon his return in December, Roman Reigns was slowly turned up. It also didn't help that Dan O'Brien had just returned as well, and the thing is, with peak Dan O'Brien, the fans will make noise and don't care who's in the way. Yep. Here, it was Roman Reigns. Come Rumble time, it was set up to force everybody to cheer for Roman. Ryan was eliminated early on, mm -hmm. and that was the beginning. Ambrose and Ziggler. Yeah, once on once Brian was eliminated in that rumble very early, oh, oh, it it uh <laughs> it was it was it was gonna be a a, a very interesting uh rest of the rumble. <laughs> came and those two were set up to be the big obstacle, but they turned on the match, and even when the Rock came out, it's like, hey, cool to see you, Rock. Fuck you, Roman. Nothing was going to help him, and even nope. Rusev was cheered to win it. Mm -hmm. But he didn't, and the conclusion saw the fans tweet, cancel WWE Network, mm -hmm. complain on the internet. It was a mess. And the Roman push, coupled with a few other things, led to WWE suffering then-record low ratings. It mm -hmm. hurt the product a lot and felt forced because Roman Reigns was talented. He was just green and needed direction, not misguidance. It should have mm -hmm. been slow and natural, something like beating Rusev for the U.S. title at WrestleMania and winning the world title there later we go. at the big event. So, that at the sounds end of the day, much better. We're going to turn on him anyway, so that's just how it is. But he would have had a lot more goodwill from the rest of the audience. And a minor thing to mention is that CM Punk interview. You guys remember that CM Punk interview with Colt Cabana? That was when CM Punk's like, oh, they got to make Roman look strong. And a lot of people, a lot of people from there were like, hey, this guy's overpushed. His 2015 run was very bumpy, but he ended the year being cheered after some clever booking as well. It was very smart of them to book it the way they did. But this is not the video for that. That's for another time. Roman Reigns' issues with the authority intensified after he took out Triple H. At this point, we all knew what was up. Especially mm -hmm. because Roman won the title and was forced to defend it. The thing is, Triple H returning, you know, like, and winning the whole thing, I feel it was average. Like, I want to say it's trash. It's not. It's not. It's not bad. But it just came off as unnecessary. I yeah. get there was an injury crisis at the time, and the likes of John Cena and Seth Rollins weren't there. But there could have been a better winner, right? Because that Triple H and Roman Reigns match was so boring. It was a oh, I, man. I honestly think, and I'm going to stand by this. I think I had a discussion with someone in the comment section when we was talking about this. Where I was like, no, Dean Ambrose shouldn't have been the guy to win that, win that Royal Rumble. I think he should have. Be only because the main event would have been 
a little bit more interesting. Uh, y'all can't tell me the main event of WrestleMania, Dean Ambrose versus Roman Reigns, would have been a little bit more interesting because now you kind of you kind of would have been able to play with something here. Like you could have that could have been the moment you turn Roman. That could have been the moment because everyone would have cheered Dean Ambrose. Roman Reigns would have tried his hardest to like really, you know, like really try to stay true and honest, but he would have heard the negativity from everybody else. You know, maybe Dean Ambrose could have been like, you know, the people don't love you, bro. You know how this ends. You know what I'm saying? And he finally turns. I think that would have been a greater story to tell than Roman versus Triple H because we knew how this was going to end. Gee, all I remember from that match is Roman accidentally spearing Stephanie or something. Like, I don't remember much from it. Dean Ambrose, a Shield main event with the two facing off could have been special. Just the said history it. between those two and the action, the match itself would have been better. Yeah. But it wasn't to be, and it was another disappointing Roman Reigns match. The hype for the Royal Rumble in San Antonio was real. It was by far the most star-studded Royal Rumble in mm -hmm. almost 10 years and gave off an unpredictable feeling. It could have been The Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, Goldberg, Chris Jericho. That hype and excitement for a Royal Rumble hadn't been felt in years. Yeah. When the match happened, it just happened. The favorites disappeared like that and we were yeah. left with Roman <laughs> Reigns and Randy Orton. Roman was a surprise entrant and let me tell you, the dread and lack of excitement the man had <laughs> was incredible. You're like, who is it? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Is it Finn? Is it Omega? Is it Nakamura? Who? Who's it going to be? Then you hear, da -da, da -da. <laughs> And just thinking about it now, it was funny, and it, it still is. Like, when you look at that time period, everybody hated this man. Obviously, some people cheered him and whatnot, but the majority booed him. They did not like him. And mm -mm. at this point, whoever was the opponent in the ring, it didn't matter if it was John Cena, Rusev, Hell, even Jack Gallagher, they would cheer him. And that's what happened as Randy Orton managed to win the entire thing with the fans cheering. It was a bit odd to see him win, but the betting was mm -hmm. in his favor a few days earlier. Personally, I didn't understand why Orton needed to win the Royal Rumble. The story was him infiltrating the Wyatt family and turning the whole thing into ruins. It doesn't really need a Royal Rumble. And that kind of fell flat, too. <laughs> that fell flat. Oh, that fell flat. Granted, I get what he's saying. It didn't need the Royal Rumble. You could have just had him do that on his own. You know what I'm saying? Didn't need the Royal Rumble win. Um, but, yeah, that, that definitely, that match, that feud just fell flat. I was expecting a little bit more, but it didn't go nowhere. So, I mean, I didn't have a problem with him winning. It was it was a anybody but Roman situation at the time. So, it was like, all right, let's give it to Randy. <laughs> Victory. Then again, another story was in front of them, and that's, of course, the Chris Jericho storyline. So, if they weren't going to do that, what were they going to do? That leaves one more story, The Undertaker. And with 2007 AJ Styles, one of the most perfect, immaculate eras a wrestler's ever had, I know for a fact that they would have burned down the building, built it up, and did it again. Mm -hmm. That match for the WWE title would have been incredible. Mm. Randy Orton was an odd choice, and it didn't help that the WrestleMania match was disgusting and forgettable. Yeah. I remember watching WrestleMania 33 the next day in the morning, and I didn't know the results, you know? So, start the show at 11 a.m., I didn't watch it. I knew this match wasn't going to be good. I literally skipped over it and later learned that I didn't really miss much. It was bad. It sucked, which was not a surprise to me. So all in all, Royal Rumble, Randy Orton is the Royal Rumble winner, was pretty underwhelming due to what came out of it. The 2018 and 19 Rumbles were not really offensive. They were inoffensive. It seemed like the right calls at the time. It's mm -hmm. just the aftermath that was an issue for a bunch of them. With WrestleMania 36 on the horizon, though, it meant yet another challenger was to be determined in the Rumble. For the woman, it didn't seem like there was many favorites. I remember at the time thinking it would be Shayna Baszler because she had unfinished business with Bailey and Becky Lynch. But it turned out to be Charlotte and why? Because. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, it's always her. It's always the wheels keep on going. She leaves. She comes back. We all know she's going to win the title again. That's how it always is. That's, that's crazy. He said that because that's, that's exactly what fucking recently happened. <laughs> Unlike a bunch of these, the woman's Royal Rumble did not have many choices. There's, of course, the shocking choices, you know, if you want to, like, do something big. Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair. But they weren't going to do that. And other than Charlotte, there was only one woman that could have won the entire thing. And that's Sasha Banks. But she got injured. She got injured at the time. It led to Charlotte stat panning once again. Stat this all leads panning. me to 2022-2022. The most disappointing set of Royal Rumble winners in recent years. Mm -hmm. Ronda Rousey and Brock Lesnar. The Rumbles like the true mm -hmm. favorite. You know, both matches, they did not have a true favorite. We were going into it, it's like, oh, 
he could win it, she could win it. We didn't really know who had the best chance. The women's rumble had me believing Sasha Banks would win because of her return, and the men's for me was AJ Styles, even though he didn't really look like he had a much of a chance to begin with when you look at the build. The pay-per-view didn't have much hype behind it, and with the lack of favorites, it turned out to be very uninteresting. Ronda winning the Rumble was dull, I did not care mm. for it, and it looked like nope. what nobody in their right mind would ask for if no. they knew what it was going to lead to. And ever since she came back, her form was nothing close to her 2018 run. Four years is a long time in wrestling, and it seemed like time has passed her by. Then yeah. in the main event, Brock Lesnar, who all he has to do is say the two words title shot, enters at number 30, yep. wins it. It's one of the worst things WWE did in 2022, and that's not really saying much, because if you ask me, it's probably going to be the first thing on my mind. It wasn't that good, and it was a waste of a Royal Rumble, you know? It also didn't help that the matches themselves were mm -hmm. very forgettable. Like, if it was a good Rumble, people were like, oh, at least it was a good match. But it wasn't. Then you had Brock Lesnar randomly coming in and destroying half the roster before winning the whole thing, so it was dumb. All right, so that's the Royal Rumble winners this is nobody asked for. Very I good. I actually thought about going back a little. Possibly to Hogan's second Rumble victory. It just didn't make sense for me to go back all the way because I thought it was unnecessary. So that's why I started with 99. Because if you go back, a lot of the winners were liked this and that. And definitely, definitely, for somebody like Lex Luger, there had to be a lot of people that actually wanted him to win it in 94, right? There just had to be. So that's why I started with 1999. I went away for a couple of days because I was trying to think of the next video. I was going back and forth. That's what caused me to release this so late so i apologize for that i got a couple of videos on my mind these are some of the videos i have on my okay mind. i wish i could do them this month but i can't guarantee all of them i know for a fact the first two actually the first three are this month for definitely definitely that one obviously is going to be very very long i'm <laughs> eager to make it i'm very excited to make it <laughs> it's good it's well. crazy i, I may have to check it. that one out durag vince oh brother <laughs> Oh, uh, no, nah, this was a dope one, man. I'm going to go ahead and give this a like. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and subscribe. Y'all go subscribe to Wrestling's uh, Premiere. Uh, give him a subscription. Shout out to, to the dude, man. This was a pretty good video. Uh, yeah, man. Honestly, I want to keep it a buck. Yeah, that list sounds about right. Uh, last year's Royal Rumble winners were fucking just atrociously awful. In the sense of just booking wise like really when ronda came out i was like oh it's over when brock came out i was like oh okay it's over i was just like yo this is this is what we're doing this is this is how we go start off wrestlemania season okay all right cool so yeah i i'm in agreement with a lot of these man but comment down below let me know which some of the uh which are some of the winners that you felt like Mm, they shouldn't have won like I, I don't i don't know how i feel about this they they made the wrong decision here let me know down below man i appreciate y'all kicking it we ah well, I, I can't even talk man i can't even talk i'm gonna just end the video there i'm in the video rob ross is out i'm done i'm done